Hey guys, I'm back with another video and this one I'm excited about. So the other day I was writing in my journal and I realized I only have about 10 pages left. I never thought I would come to the day where I actually finished this. And this journal has about the last six years of my entire life. And that's just crazy to think about. So that includes my recent work life, my college years, and a little bit of my high school life. And I don't typically go back in my journal and reread old entries, but I decided to go back and read some of the stuff I wrote in high school and I was on something else. Back in the day, I really thought I was the main character and I was, and I'm so happy I thought that way because I got into some shit and um, as much as I hated drama, I was somehow always stirring the pot as a little teen and it's really fun to look back and reminisce. Mm -hmm. So to give y'all a little bit of insight on how I thought I was the main character, I'm gonna read the first page of this diary, the very, very first page. Well, here I am. I've made it to my last first day of high school. For the last three years in this shithole, I have potentially awaited this finale, this ending to an awful wondrous chapter. However, even though I've made it this far, a number of days foreshadows my destination. Graduating. <laughs> and even though I've made it to this moment, I can't forget my journey here. Considering my love for simplistic memories and the major plot points of my venturing through adolescence, I plan on documenting exactly that. So much has forever marked my being as a person, and to fully understand who I am today, I must, I must voyage and file through these memories piece by piece. So here it begins. <laughs> I wrote this as if I was writing a novel to some teen drama, and that's kind of what it feels like now. But... As y'all can tell from the title, this particular story time is gonna be about my first love triangle. And I haven't thought about this love triangle in so long, but as I was going through my journal, I just started to reminisce and I found little entries on what had happened. So I thought it'd be a fun little story to tell. So if y'all are ready, let's get into it. <coughs> drink water like a little kid I swear so this all started my sophomore year of high school and I started to hang out at the courts after practice because I started getting good at tennis and I actually loved playing it and a girl named Jenna who is actually still one of my friends today she would stay after practice as well so we started getting closer and then I had an old friend from the eighth grade that I haven't hung out with in forever he would naturally walk by the tennis courts every day because our tennis courts were placed in the very front of the school sandwiched between two parking lots. So there was the main parking lot that all the students would park in during the day and then there was like the athlete parking lot on the other side and all the baseball players, football players, they would park on the athletic side after school. So when he was coming back to his truck, he would always pass the tennis court. And eventually he just kind of walked by and was like, why are y'all still here? Because it was way after practice and we were like, we love playing tennis. Like, you should try. Oh, did I name him Jack? Okay, let's call him Jack. Jack was a pretty competitive dude. So Jack would hang around and be like, yeah, I can beat all of you. And me and Jenna would be like, uh-huh. No, you can't because we are really freaking good. And he was determined to get better so that he could beat us one day. So he kept coming by the courts and eventually he would come by with his friend, let's call him Dylan. So Jack and Dylan started coming to the tennis courts pretty often and they would see me and Jenna. So we would all play together. And eventually we just started becoming a knit friend group. I felt like I was doing everything with these people. We had so many different phases. 
we would always be at the courts. We had a bowling phase and that was so freaking fun. So we had just become closer and closer as a friend group. So Jenna was a year above us, so she was going to graduate and naturally she started drifting away from the friend group and that just left me, Jack, and Dylan. And we continued to hang out without Jenna, just the three of us. And after being around these boys for so long, I started to kind of grow feelings for both of them. Don't ask me why. They were completely, okay, they weren't complete opposites, but I would say they definitely had way different personalities. Jack was really cocky, confident, strutted his stuff, and then Dylan was more comical, funny, a little more extroverted and outgoing. Because although Jack was really confident, he was more on the quiet side. These two boys in my high school life just made my head turn for some reason. I was like, God damn, I like you both. Oh, no. And I just didn't know what to do with my feelings. And I kept it in for like a couple weeks until it just boiled over in the worst way possible. So one day we were sitting in Jack's car. Jack was in the driver's seat and Dylan was in the passenger seat. I'm sitting in the back in the middle, just like leaning forward so I could talk to these two boys. And there's a moment of silence where no one is talking. And I just decide in this moment to tell them, hey, Jack, Dylan, I just need to get my feelings out there. I think I like you both and I just, I can't decide who to pick. So <laughs> I don't even know what they were gonna do with this information. I literally told them both at the exact same time that I like them. Who freaking does that? In my mind, I figured that, hey, they are literally best friends. They would never let a girl come between two besties. So they are just both gonna decide not to like me. I got my feelings out there and no one gets hurt. And then there's the diabolical little devil on my shoulder who is loving the idea of having two guys fond over me. So although I had semi good intentions with just like airing it out, getting my feelings out there and having no expectations, I wanted them to just fight over me. And that's exactly what happened. Over the next like week or two, every time we hung out, it just felt like they were trying to one up each other. You could just tell the tension was rising between these two boys. So after watching these two boys just kind of go at it mentally, I decided they are clearly fighting over me and who I'm going to pick. So I need to go ahead and just pick somebody because this is actually getting ridiculous. And I started it. So I need to fix it. God, little teeny. So I go back and forth in my journal. I go back and forth in my mind and who I like more. And eventually I picked Jack because I kind of had a crush on Jack when we would hang out in the eighth grade. I always thought he was cute. And I loved his quiet cockiness. I don't like that anymore. Like I love quiet, confident dudes. But when it pushes over to the edge and you become cocky, I cut it off. Like, it's not hot. It's just annoying. It's not a good look. But back in the day, I didn't really have those standards. So I like that about him. And eventually we're in the car and I look over to him and I tell him, I just have to admit, I think I like you more. Like, I choose you. And he kind of just sits there in silence like, Wow, like she likes me? But I can't really read where his feelings are at. And I just feel so good about making a decision. And I'm really excited because I'm like, I'm about to have a legit high school relationship. <laughs> My teenage mind was going off. I was having little fireworks. However, 
A week passes by and Jack doesn't ask me to be his girlfriend. And we've hung out as a group and individually many times throughout the week. So I'm just like, what? What is going on? I thought I was about to have a boyfriend. At this point, I decide to take a step back because I had put my feelings out there and nothing was really being reciprocated. So I was like, okay, it's your move now. Whatever, like I care. I was like, I'm too much of a bad, bad bitch, bitch for him not to ask me out after I pick him over somebody else who is his best friend. Ultimately, I'm like, he's gonna have to make a move on me. So I just act like nothing happened, just like how he was acting. A little time goes by and we're all hanging out again. It's me, Jack, and Dylan, and I'm driving both of them home. I'm dropping off Jack first because he lives the furthest from my place, and then Dylan, who lives closer to me. And I wanna paint this picture for y'all. I'm in the driver's seat. Dylan is in the passenger seat. Jack, he's in the back middle. I put my car in park, and I'm saying my goodbyes to Jack. Jack leans forward through the middle console and tries to kiss me in the driver's seat. This is literally so awkward. He's like squeezing in and puckering up this direction. And I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Because he's doing this in front of Dylan. And I'm like, stop, what are you doing? And then he leans back a bit and then he leans forward again and tries it again. And I literally push my hand into his face and like, I say out loud, this is not happening right now. What are you doing? So he tries to kiss me a total of two times, two or three times all in front of Dylan. After this, he probably felt really defeated and rejected, but it's like, I had put out my feelings a week and a half ago and you're just now trying to make some type of romantic gesture to me in front of your best friend who you knew liked me? I mean, I kind of created this whole mess, but... And in that moment, I realized that this whole little love triangle where I thought I was in control was never about me. They wanted to see who could get me, not because they really truly liked me, but because they needed to one up their bestie. And that really took a shot at my ego. And I had a lot of pride in high school. I was not gonna let them take control of the narrative that I was creating. So Jack, he leaves. <laughs> and I still need to drop off Dylan. And I'm driving home to Dylan's place. I start telling Dylan how, oh, I thought I liked Jack a lot. I just don't think I feel that way about him anymore. Honestly, I feel like I've made a mistake and now I just know it's a little too late for us and I just want us all to be friends, blah, 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 blah. I was just going off about how I no longer like Jack and that Dylan is still at the forefront of my mind. I actually care about people's feelings now, so I would never do this. And Dylan, I feel like was eating it up. He was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was just taking my compliments, eating it up like cake. So we finally arrive at Dylan's house and he tells me, well, just so you know, if you're still about it, like I'm down. And at the time, Lord's album had just come out, Melodrama. <laughs> Melodrama is a freaking masterpiece for one. And I just wanted my life to feel as emotional and dramatic as Melodrama. So when he said that he was still down to make us work, I took that as a green light. I was like, this is my green light to have the best little teenage moment I can have. My heart starts beating 
because I'm running out of time. Dylan sees that I have no response and he just gets out of the car and starts walking up to his front porch. And I'm like, how am I gonna make this a moment? Am I gonna let this moment pass? Do I do the right thing? Do I go after him? So many things were racing through my mind and you know, my brain's not developed yet. So I say, fuck it. I get out of my car and I run up to his porch before he opens the door and we just start full on making out. <laughs> we start making out in the porch light is shining on us. I truly felt like I was in a movie. All of my little teenage dreams were coming true. And I left that makeout sesh just kind of vibrating off the high it gave me. I got back in my car and then I was like, Jack, what am I gonna do? Eventually he's gonna find out or know after this little event. Me and Dylan took some time to figure out what was going on and a feeling started bubbling up within me. So I realized I did not have feelings for this boy. After all that I put him through, I didn't like him. And of course I figured this out a little too late. Now I know that if someone is my friend and I see them as a friend, I will most likely never like them romantically. Because when I like someone romantically, I see them in that sense from the beginning. And I never saw him that way in the beginning. So I just knew this was truly just a well-developed friendship that I physically could not turn into an emotional romantic one. So I had to bring up the news. I text Dylan, I'm like, Hey Dylan, I think we really need to chat. How about we get some food and just talk? And he's like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So we're both eating our food in my car and I just rip off the band-aid. I just say, hey, I've been thinking about it and I just don't think I have feelings for you and I just can't continue to lead you on. And he is so mad at me. Honestly, like I would be too. I was basically being a fuckboy. He looks me dead in the face in my car and is like, I am no longer your friend. If I hang out with Jenna or Jack or all of us together, just know it's not for you. It's for them. And I'm never going to be hanging out with you alone ever again. We are not besties. We are not friends. You just fucked with my feelings. I just knew it wasn't gonna get there anyway. So it was pretty easy for me to say like, hey, it ain't working out. But I know he truly actually did feel for me. And I didn't know that until he was so angry. It finally clicked in my teenage brain that he liked me for me, which was kind of hard to believe at the time. Like, yeah, I thought these guys liked me, but I thought they liked me because I was cute. And that's when I started to do a little more reflection because I didn't want to continue hurting the people in my life. I really sat back after that day and was like, why am I doing this to people? That little moment I had, was it worth it? And then eventually I knew Jack was going to find out and he did. Jack never really talked about it with me. So I kind of don't know what his perspective was on that whole situation, but he definitely had a calm, cool, collected attitude about it. I never heard about his feelings or if he was mad, sad. He was indifferent. And I was kind of mad because I was like, I guess I meant nothing. But then I got over it, so it was totally fine. This all occurred before my senior year of high school, our senior year of high school. And me and Dylan ended up having a class together and we sat next to each other. So how is he gonna continue to ignore me? And we decided that the past was the past and we reconnected and became friends. We weren't as close and the friend group definitely started to part ways. 
Jack started to explore possible relationships with two other girls and Dylan was doing his own thing. He was kind of liking a girl that was on the tennis team with me and I was pretty indifferent because I just knew I didn't like either of these boys. So I was like, yeah, y'all do y'all's thing, have fun, la la la, yeah. So that is pretty much it for this story time. Um, I have lots of teen drama story times that are pretty funny and spicy that I could share. Please come along with my journey, like and subscribe, la la la. I just realized I never explained why this is my first love triangle, <laughs> but it's because love triangles just seem to follow me throughout life. I had one in college and then I had another one before dating my boyfriend, but not really, but it's still a good story. So let me know if y'all want a little series. I might not tell my college one, we'll see, but definitely the third one I will, <laughs> if y'all want. Okay, bye.